I just say something, that manner is Absolutely. really irritating. bad has happened. Whoa. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 PR disasters in the thick of it. They've leaked all the bloody emails. Mr. Tickle sounds like a gropey clown at a kid's oh. party. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at the biggest scandals from this iconic comedy series. Let us know in the comments which one you think could happen in real life. Number 10. Liam Bentley Nicola's is brand new to being a member of the cabinet, having spent her career thus far as a totally unknown backbencher and becoming a shock appointment. Ladies and gentlemen, um, may I introduce the new Secretary of State Hello. for the Department of Social Affairs oh, and Citizenship, <laughs> Nicola Murray. She's still green, so she's selected to head out to Leamington to endorse Liam Bentley in a by-election. There's just one problem. When she stands in front of the sign, it's obscured in just a way that it says something outrageous. No, I think no, that no, is no, terrific. no, no, no. Jesus, Terry, the letters. That's great. There. What does it say, Terry? It says Liam No, it doesn't. Bentley. It's a political disaster for Nicola right at the beginning of her proper career. She's dropped in the deep end and sees the ruthlessness of the press for a photo op or funny headline. Hi, darling. Did you see mummy on the telly? <laughs> I know. Did I look funny? It, it did. Good boy. It said, I am bent. Number nine, sweary email. Upon moving into the larger office that would be the show's home for the rest of its run, the government is having issues with the email system. This culminates in Hugh sending an email to Glenn full of the show's trademark profanity. Except there's another Glenn Cullen with an almost identical email address, and they're an eight-year-old girl. This child, right. she is called Glenn, after right. Glenn Close, yeah. and, and, the, and her surname is Cullen. She's Glenn Cullen. To make matters worse, Hugh's too much of a coward to own up to what he's done. They decide they're going to blame Terry because Hugh used Terry's computer to send his foul message. Just tell me, truthfully, did you send that email? No, I didn't. And you know I didn't. What? what I'm sorry, are you, are you inferring? That Implying. That you're implying that it was me who... Terry gets a frantic call from the girl's parents, and the situation spirals from there. The Guardian website has broken the email thing. In the final edition here at the Standard, right. I am suddenly a major news story. Right. Sweary woman of Whitehall. Number eight, news nights. Ben Swain, possibly the most useless politician in government, and that's saying something, has a landmark Newsnight interview early in the specials with Jeremy Paxman. Right, Ben, I heard the big news about Paxo. Oh, right. Nice. What was it you did in your gap year again? Um, interrailing, month long. Okay, but Did you ever travel like 100 miles per hour head first through a tunnel full of pig shit? He's probably the worst person they could have sent to discuss complex topics like immigration, and it turns out Swain has a very noticeable nervous blink. Uh, it doesn't look uh, particularly relaxed, does it? It's his first time though, isn't it? Or what, I, uh, or what I do think, he's not really what, what the question is about. Everybody watching the interview is horrified, especially Malcolm. That's a mega blink. It's not just a blink. It looks like what happens when you punch a cow. To make matters worse, Swain forgets to bring up the policy he was there to announce in the first place. He didn't mention the coalface idea. Right here, right... You don't deserve to live. Ben becomes a political pariah for the rest of the series, with everybody fully aware of just how much of an idiot he is. Number 7. Radio 5 Live Nicola and her shadow cabinet equivalent, Peter Mannion, are brought on to Richard Bacon's Radio 5 live show for a spirited debate, only for disaster to strike. Mannion is charming and funny initially, while Nicola completely forgets that she's had her ears pierced and then makes some tone-deaf comments about poverty. No, I'm not being cynical, Nicky Murray. It's a perfectly legitimate question. How can you be inspired 
out of poverty. Eventually, both of them deteriorate when Mannion goes after bankers' bonuses. Surprised to hear you turning on the city boys. Um, you never found the JFU donating huge wadges of cash to your party disgusting. Well, well that, that, that's a separate Even uh, though issue. everyone knows they've got links with sweatshops. Not only do all their advisors get drafted in for damage control, but so do both of the spin doctors. Peter Mannion, can you explain, please, why your party spin doctor has arrived entirely unannounced? I would say it was an indication of how seriously our party is taking the allegations. However, the very real fact that it's all hands on deck for a radio interview between two minor ministers draws even more attention to the situation, and the revelations don't stop coming. Number 6. Focus Group Hugh doesn't know which policy is best for the DOSAC to endorse because he's got no idea what the British public wants. So, um, we need to, at the, this morning's policy review, come up with some sort of new announcement that's a bit more connected, a bit mm. more funky. Typical of the government, a focus group is called in to sniff out which policy is the most popular, with one problem. The woman they like the most, whose opinion they decide to base the entire policy decision on, turns out to be a paid actor. You remember Mary from the focus group? What, Miss uh, Immaculate Bloody Conception? She's an actress. When the news starts to leak, they have to get out ahead of the scandal and try to get the actor on side. Interestingly, this particular piece of fiction has a firm basis in fact. I still don't really understand what's going on. What we've done. We can hold those dogs back, right? right? What do you mean? We can get you a nice journalist. Joanna Scanlon, who plays Terry, did work as a hired focus group participant before getting a role on the show. The issue is you, the issue of your of you being an actress. Right. I uh, actually prefer actor. Number 5. Bullying After the Liam Bentley escapade, Malcolm forces Nicola to choose between her husband's resignation, since he works for a prison firm that's been given contracts by her department, or sending her daughter Ella to a state school instead of a private one. Are you still going ahead with a private school? Because if you are, we need to draft a statement saying that your husband's leaving his job. She picks the state school, and this comes back to bite her a few episodes later when Ella is threatened with exclusion because it's found that she's been viciously bullying other students. Uh, there was an incident yesterday. Uh, Ella and some accomplices attacked another year seven girl with a pair of hair straighteners. The news begins to leak and Mannion finds himself under pressure to use it in an attack against the government. Which is ultimately what happens despite him personally promising Nicola the contrary. A lot of pressure on me uh, from above to use it, but I, I just wanted you to know that I won't. Thank you. Number 4. Resignation the Prime Minister announces he's going to resign far earlier than intended, leaving everybody scrambling to find his replacement and make inroads with them so that they can save their jobs. Prime Minister has resigned. F***ing me. No, I'm not f***ing you, Ollie. Where's the ten Chief among them is Malcolm, of course, who needs to find a tame minister to take over the top job so that he can stay on as the ruthless Chief Whip. You'll let him know, yeah? You will tell the new Prime Minister who stopped this, yeah? The whole second special takes place over one night as they variously pick potential leaders like Claire Ballantyne and try to ward off the eventual rise of Tom to the premiership. Listen, get hold of Nick. Ask him if he's thought about signing out another body. A safe pair of hands. Suggest Claire Ballantyne. It's complete chaos, with allegiances changing one minute to the next, while the Daily Mail struggles to work out who to back on the following day's front page. Well... What I'm hearing is Ben Swain. Ben Swain? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I literally don't know who he is. Number 3. Hugh's Flat When Hugh lands in Dosak at the beginning of the series, we're already hearing whispers of how his city centre flat is causing trouble. The flat is paid for with public money, but Hugh isn't staying there, instead opting to continue the commute from his family home. How do they square with the fact that you yourself have a second property lying empty that you won't sell? It's, uh, it's not technically empty. Suffice to say, the public doesn't like ministers having empty properties that they refuse to live in, but claim on their expenses, which is why this eventually blows up in the first series finale. Malcolm, yeah. we're too late. What? All the papers have got hold of it. What? The Express has been making offers on it. Malcolm decides Hugh is going to have to get rid of his flat, 
which leads to various newspapers making joke offers to buy it. Yeah, they're calling the scandal Flatgate. Scandal? Flatgate. Well, that's crap. Hmm. I mean, it's a crap name for a scandal. Number two, massive irretrievable data loss. Through a clerical error, Nicola and company lose months worth of vital immigration figures tracking entrance to the UK. Basically, every British citizen who's arrived here in the last seven and a half months, <clears throat> their names have been wiped. The immigration database is blank. Despite Terry saying the contrary, they can't get the numbers back, horrifying Malcolm. Even he struggles to come up with a plan to contain the damage. I, I don't even have the energy to pretend I already knew. Which is for the best because I'm going to need all of my f***ing energy to f***ing rip all of your bodies to bits. To make matters even worse, they later have lunch with a group of journalists and Nicola accidentally reveals the data leak to a reporter when the reporter believes she's speaking on the record. You think right, that okay. this is going to advance your career? Is this you moving forward? I mean, at least my career's got a trajectory, whereas yours is about to crash head on into oh, a yeah. change of government. It's down to them to smooth things over with the Daily Mail and sack a random civil servant who they've blamed for the crisis. Andrew, mate, sorry, nothing personal. You've got to clear your desk and go. Number one, Mr. Tickell. During Series 4, the teams in government frequently make fun of someone called Mr. Tickell, or Mr. Tickle. Tickell was a nurse who lost his home following an unpopular piece of policy, who then started to protest by living in a tent. It's a sensible policy. If we sell off NHS key worker housing, we could pay off the PFI debts. I mean, we haven't made him live in a tent, we just sold his house. By Episode 3, however, Tickell tragically has taken his own life. In episode 5, the junior ministers rope Glenn into leaking the emails implicating absolutely everyone in the department for ruthlessly mocking the poor man. The Shit. Guardian have received an email from Fergus. Actually, do you know, strike that, a chain of emails. Oh, perfect, with all of our comments about Mr Tickle underneath. Oh god, not, not the one where we all piled in with the Mr Men joke. The fallout is disastrous and an inquiry is eventually set up by the opposition, which leads to a huge investigation into the leak culture that has ruled Whitehall for years. How many Mr Tickles does it take to change a light bulb? He doesn't have a light bulb, he's in a tent. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.